Hello everyone, you're welcome to Lakebass tutorial. For today, we'll be looking at introduction and classification of the nervous system. So just listen and learn, and you'll be glad that you are part of this tutorial. Now, what is the nervous system? The nervous system is an organized network of tissue that uses electrical and chemical stimuli to help all parts of the body to communicate with each other. There is need for total communication between the entire body to ensure that we work effectively. So the nervous system control, regulates, and coordinates the general activities of the body, ensure that we live perfectly in our environment, that we adapt to the environment. So it regulates both the internal and the external environment. Without the nervous system, other systems cannot function effectively. So understanding the anatomy of the nervous system is key into knowing how the structures uh, function. Now, the nervous system is made up of the brain, consists of the brain, the spinal cord, the cranial nerve, as well as the spinal nerve. So as we continue in the tutorial, I will explain what all this is about. So the nervous system coordinates movement, regulate the body, hemostasis, interpret sensory information from special senses and control behavior. So our behavior is like a, an output of uh, what we the input, what we put into the brain. The nervous system enables us to adapt to external environment through production of heat to the body. Now, divisions of the nervous system. The nervous system is classified into two, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord, while the peripheral nervous system is made up of the spinal nerves as well as the cranial nerves. So the spinal nerves and the cranial nerves are components of the peripheral nervous system. These peripheral nervous systems further divided into two components. We have the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is the one that, uh, the part of the nervous system that innervates the, the, the cardiac muscles and the smooth muscles. They are under autonomic control. So the autonomic nervous system is further divided into sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So we have the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division. The sympathetic division is the part that prepares us for fight and flight response. While the parasympathetic is the one responsible for us to rest, conserve energy, eat. So then the other aspect of the peripheral nervous system is the somatic nervous system. Somatic nervous system controls the, it, it innervates the skeletal muscles, innervates the skeletal muscles to ensure that the movement is coordinated. So that these are the components of the, 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 the nervous system. We have the central nervous system, we have the peripheral nervous system, the peripheral nervous system further divided into somatic nervous system that is under our control, is voluntary. We can control uh, 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 that aspect of the innovations, like the skeletal muscles. You decide to move your limbs, you decide to move your head and any part of the body. Then we have the autonomic nervous system, which is involuntary, it's involuntary. I've said earlier that it's divided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic division. So the control of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic is here, as I said earlier, as well as the somatic and the autonomy. So this is kind of schematic representation. Generally, this nervous system receive sensory information, sensory information from the spatial senses, from the external environment into the brain. So this sensory information is being interpreted and integrated and the response interpreted and the response is being sent back to the body through the motor system, through the motor system. So the, the generally, the, these are the parts and the function of these uh, systems. Now, it is important for us to note some of these uh, terminologies because as we proceed in this tutorial, you'll be hearing about ganglion. What are ganglion? They are aggregation of neurons. So, aggregation of uh, nuclei. That is what form a ganglion. Then we have neurons. 
we have a nerve, a group of nerve fibers on nerve. Then we have tracts. In the nervous system, there are various tracts where information are relayed. Now, the central nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. It's made up of the brain and the spinal cord. This is a diagram of the brain and the spinal cord. This is a diagram of the brain and the spinal cord. We have the cerebrum here. In fact, embryologically, let's look at that before I describe the parts of that, of the uh, cerebrum. So all in, this uh, central nervous system sorts incoming sensory information through the spatial senses, generate thoughts, emotions, forms, and store memory. These are general function of the brain, general function of the brain. Also stimulates uh, glandular secretion. Now, embryologically, the brain has, a, has the three major components. We have the forebrain, which is the proencephalon. We have the midbrain, which is the mesencephalon. And then we have the hindbrain, which is the rubencephalon. The forebrain, which is the prosencephalon, gives rise to the teleencephalon, which is the cerebrum. The diencephalon that gave rise to the epithalamus, the thalamus, the hypothalamus. We have the midbrain, that is the mesencephalon. Then we have the hindbrain, rubencephalon, which gives rise to the metencephalon, the pawn and the cerebellum, as well as the medulla oblongata, that is the mimencephalon. So we have the telencephalon, diencephalon, mesencephalon, metencephalon, and mimencephalon as component of the or parts of the brain. It is important to know that another classification is that uh, the brain is made up of the cerebrum and the brain stem, which is uh, probably what we can see from this diagram. So we can see the cerebrum, the cerebrum here, and then from the midbrain down is known as the brain stem. So this cerebrum is made up of loops. We have the frontal loops, we have the uh, parietal loops, we have the the temporal lobes and the occipital lobes. The cerebrum also consists of the medulla and the, the cortex. The outer layer is called the cortex and the inner layer is called the medulla. Within the cerebral cortex, of course, we have two cerebral uh, hemispheres, the left and the right cerebral hemisphere. So within the cerebral cortex, you see some structures here. Okay. The, the deeper a depression that is within the cerebral cortex is called a sulcus. then so when there are so many sulci, and then the elevation, elevated parts of the uh, 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 structures found on the surface of the cerebrum is called the gyrus or gyri when they are much. So they are, play a key role in learning, understanding, and memory, as the case may be. The peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system consists of uh, nerves from the brain and nerves from the spinal cord. So from the brain, we have what we call the cranial nerves. And from the spinal cord, we have the spinal nerves. We have the spinal nerves. So we have afferent neurons that send information from the spatial senses into the nervous system. And then when this information has been interpreted through the, sens through the brain centers, the information is sent back to the various body parts via the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. So we have uh, effector neurons as well as uh, affector neurons and effector neurons. Affector neurons are the sensory neurons, whereas effector neurons are the motor neurons. The somatic nervous system made up of sensory neurons that convey information from the cutaneous and spatial sense receptor in the head, body wall, and the extremities to the nervous system. Also contain the motor neurons from the CNS that conduct impulses to the skeletal muscles. I've earlier des described how that works, as well as that of the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic means that the function on their own is not under the control of the will, not under the control of the will. So they contain effector neurons that conduct impulses to smooth and cardiac motor as well as the glands in the body. So two divisions, as I've earlier said, sympathetic division 
and the parasympathetic division. The sympathetic division is stimulatory, while the parasympathetic division is inhibitory. It has inhibitory effects. Now, coming to the cranial nerve, it's important for us to note the 12 cranial nerves. The cranial nerves are 12 in number. There are 12 cranial nerves. Number one, we have the olfactory nerve. Number two, we have the optic uh, nerve. Number three, we have the oculomotor nerve. Number four, we have the trochlear nerve. Number five, we have the trigeminal nerve. It's important to know that the trigeminal nerve, tri, trigeminal, meaning that they have three other components. We have the ophthalmic nerve, maxillary nerve, as well as the mandibular nerve. They made up of the trigeminal nerve. Then number six, we have the abducens nerve. Number seven, we have the facial nerve. Number seven, number eight, we have the vest, vest, vestibulocochlear nerve. Number nine, the glossopharyngeal nerve. And then number 10, we have the vagus nerve, vagus nerve. Number 11, we have the uh, accessory nerve. And then number 12, we have the hypoglossal nerve. Those are the 12 cranial nerves. It's important for you to note and remember the 12 cranial nerve. I list them again. Number one, cranial nerve one, olfactory nerve. Cranial nerve two, optic nerve. Cranial nerve three, oculomotor nerve. Cranial nerve four, trochlear nerve. Cranial nerve five, trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal has three components. That is, ophthalmic, uh, mandibular, and maxillary nerve. Cranial nerve six, we have the abducens nerve. Cranial nerve seven, facial nerve. Cranial nerve uh, eight, we have the vestibulocochlear nerve. Cranial nerve uh, 9, glossopharyngeal nerve. Cranial nerve 10, vagus nerve. Cranial nerve 11, accessory nerve. And cranial nerve 12 is hypoglossal nerve. Details of this nerve, uh, maybe we have that tutorial in subsequent videos. But just for now, just take notes of the 12 cranial nerve. Then we have the spinal nerve. Spinal nerve. We have uh, 7 or 8 cervical, depending on some school of thought. We have uh, thoracic nerve, which are 12. We have the lumbar, 5, sacra, 5, and the coccygeous nerve, coccygeous nerve, or we call it coda. Some school of thought, we as well say this one because they are fused, or maybe four because uh, of their nature. So, in conclusion of the introduction and classification of the nervous system, it is important to know how the nervous system got inputs from the various the special senses and uh, interpret the information and send back to the effector organs for us to perform our various uh, behavior. It's also important to know how uh, the various parts of the brain function together to ensure that we adapt in our environment, as well as knowing the various division of anatomy. In our next video, we are going to look at the cells of the nervous system. Thank you.